Hey Sargon, uh, just want to do a quick little video. Um, you, I saw a video you did a while ago about illegal immigration. Um, it was on the Thinkery. Basically, um, you were kind of wondering how these, uh, you know, about you said you mentioned, oh, uh, illegal immigrants don't pay taxes. I mean, how could they pay taxes um, unless they took some social security, worked under that, and then paid taxes under that? In that case, they'd be breaking a law. And then you also mentioned scholarships. How can they get scholarships? How can they attend state-funded universities? including, uh, you know, not just funded by the state, like a lot of private colleges receive state money, but uh, actually produced by the state. Um, you know, like uh, University of Texas, it's produced by the state of Texas. Um, you have to, and uh, this is a point of, it's not contention, it's just a misunderstanding. A lot of Americans don't understand this, and a lot of um, foreigners especially don't understand this. And it's not nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things that you, you wouldn't really know unless uh, you really studied it, but... Uh, I just wanted to, that's why I just wanted to clarify. I think it's a really simple clarification. Um, there's something called, in the United States, there's something in our tax code called an ITIN. Um, it's like a social security number for uh, people who are not eligible for social security numbers, including illegal immigrants. So you can file taxes uh, to the IRS using an ITIN. Uh, this ITIN, uh, you know, I actually know some illegal immigrants who owned a, a repair shop, and they, they filed taxes, and the government even sent them a check for um, refunds. So if they overpaid the government because of withholdings, uh, the government would actually give them money back and send it to their address. So um, there's this misconception that, you know, illegal immigrants don't pay taxes. I'm sure some don't, and some people steal identities, but the whole point is that the vast majority of them do it legally with an ITIN, because uh, that's that's why the government made made the ITIN. Um, because, and, and I'll get into this for a second for why they did it. Um, it's actually a very specific reason, but also this is the same for state schools. So, um, again, I knew I knew some illegal immigrants who... Uh, went to a uh, University of Texas. I'm from Texas. It's very, it's a very conservative state, and you'd wonder, hey, they have this huge immigration problem in Texas, and they're very conservative. So why do they do things like why don't they deport the immigrants? Why, why do they let them go to state schools where the state is paying money to a university, and the university is turning around and accepting illegal immigrants? Not only that, but people they know are illegal immigrants, and not only that, they're giving scholarships to people they know are illegal immigrants. Um. And the the reason for both of these things, a lot of people don't realize this, but yeah, um, the reason for both of these things is that um, the government can't do anything about it. The government has kind of, uh, a couple of generations ago, actually, maybe maybe like 40 years ago, uh, threw up their hands, decided that there's no way to fix the immigration problem, we can't deport them, and uh, we actually need them. They're a huge asset to our society. So... And by the way, the, the other fix would be a political fix, just vote to legalize them. But the thing is, is illegal immigration is extremely unpopular. Immigrants, uh, Democrats, Republicans, conservative liberals, everyone, basically everyone is against illegal immigration. Um, and, and they're also against uh, making it, loosening up the immigration laws. Um, and Trump actually did a backflip on this too. He, he came out really strong. Um, and this is why I think he came out very strong against illegal immigration because it's such a popular like everyone agrees on it you can unite the whole country against immigrants um at least illegal immigrants um even immigrants even immigrants who like got you know legalized like you know a year ago or still say hey i don't want people coming in here illegally um and i'm not saying that's bad or anything i'm just saying it's a very it's a it's one way to unite the whole country and because of that politicians know we have to keep them here because they're an asset but they can't do it politically because it's unpopular we live in a democracy so they've actually just decide to all hold hands and pretend like the problem doesn't exist. And that's why you never heard about it. That's why no, Trump is right. No one talked about this problem uh, before before Trump. And that's why Trump started talking about it, because it's so popular. He got so popular off of his stance, and no one else would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. No one else dared say uh, be on his side, because they all know the minute they get into office, they can't do anything about it. And Trump actually kind of admitted that he, when people say, hey, you can, you can, decertify DACA you know like we know where these people live like we know who they are like we have their items you know we have um we have their this we have their that I mean it's it's not difficult how you have illegal immigrants who go to public school again like like grade school and we know where their address is and we know their parents we know their cell phones and um you can deport them it's it's like really too easy to deport them the problem is uh, expense like uh, and I want to draw an analogy between uh, prohibition and marijuana so prohibition in the 1920s in the United States uh, alcohol was illegal everyone was still drinking it's a total joke um, it's just too hard to enforce too difficult you can't have a state enforce unpopular rules uh, in a society um, so 
the the mob, you know, got huge in America. Um, a lot of politicians just ignored it, or paid to ignore it, or got assassinated if they didn't ignore it. Um, and you know, that's just life. You know, you can't you can't. It's very difficult to change people's behavior, even with the force of violence, the force of laws, the force of government. Uh, another thing was weed. You mentioned someone offered you weed in New York, and you didn't know the laws, so you uh, said no. Um, how is there weed in New York? You know, weed has been illegal in the United States for generations. You know, and the government kind of just pretended like, you know, they didn't want to throw more money into it because, I mean, like you could you could throw an infinite amount of money into trying to stop the weed problem and nothing would ever happen. Um, you'd never fix it. Weed was everywhere when I was growing up. And it's even, it's even more prevalent today um, because after a while, governments usually just uh, throw up their hands and say, whatever, we can't do anything about it, we might as well legalize it. And so that's what's happening right now with weed. That's what happened to alcohol. Um, you're also seeing that happen to immigration. It happened first under Reagan. You know, it's happened a couple times. Under Obama, you had DACA. Um, but basically, every politician has the same same strategy. Basically, uh, pretend like it doesn't. the problem doesn't exist. You know, just ignore it. And then uh, kind of work towards a political solution. Uh, you know, Reagan's was a general amnesty. Obama's was a, a you know, uh, put the DACA recipients on on file um that and that's also trump's by the way so i, I said i said earlier it might have been in a, a different shooting of this video that i said hey like um trump did a backflip on his immigration stance so um he originally came out he's very strong on immigration and he made a promise to build the wall now i still think he's going to build the wall and i think he should because he made a promise to his you know to, to you know, the people who voted him to his constituents i mean you should keep your promises but <sighs> But it's not going to do anything. It's going to be completely useless. Trump knows it's going to be useless. Um, it, the border is just too big. It's just too porous. Um, there are literally towns where that are, are half in Mexico and half in the United States, like, like border towns. Like you can't. I mean, a wall is not going to fix anything. And even if you properly man the wall, it's it's going to be way too expensive. There's no way you can uh, put the expense. Anyways, that's that's kind of a tangent. Um, people on on the higher ups have already looked at these numbers and they know it's true. Um, and by the way, like people don't realize how easy it is to fake a license. So even if you have a bunch of guards, right? If I if I own a car and I drive from Mexico to the United States and someone says, "Hey, let me see your ID." All right, here's my ID. It's a uh, you know uh, me Mexican. No, I'm my name's uh, Abdul Rahman. I'm a I'm a I'm a exchange student, you know, something, you know, like whatever. A bunch of Bangladeshi people also supposedly get across the southern border. Um, but, you know, you just, it, it's just that easy. Fake, fake IDs aren't that hard to make. And it's not that hard to get someone who lives in the United States or who is a legal immigrant to the United States to have American plates, visit Mexico for a week, bring back three people. All of them have that American identification. You know, what, what are you going to do? Like, even if you put borders at every, you know, you guards at every entrance into the United States. Like, it doesn't matter. It's it's just too easy to get through. Um, I don't know if you've ever gone from Mexico to the United States, but I don't, I don't even know if people checked my ID, like, you know, um, when I went. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they did check my ID, but I don't... There was, like, five people in the car. I don't think they checked everyone's ID. Uh, it's just one of those things. Like, one of our guys was asleep. I think the, the guy, the the officer was just like, ah, whatever, you know, like, let him through. Um, it, it's, just, it's just one of those things. Like, people don't realize... I guess here's the point. Sorry this took so long. Um, the government doesn't have the capacity to stop illegal immigration. That's the problem. And there's no political solution because Americans are so against it. Um, so you can't vote, vote it into, you know, into existence. You can't vote a solution into existence. And you can't export them. Because um, just think real quick about the cost. It's kind of like the cost of, you know, the government could theoretically take all the weed and burn it and make sure no one ever produced weed and have the death penalty for anyone caught producing or smoking weed or anyone who had weed in their bloodstream. Death penalty. Instant. Um, but the costs are just too high. If you had 10,000 ICE agents, um, all of them, you know, if all the illegal immigrants just sat on the ground right where they are right now, um, it would take like a week per agent because you got to drag them to the police station, you got to fill out the paperwork, you got to drag them to the airplane, you got to drag them off the airport, you got to plane, you got to return. Uh, you gotta have off days, sick days. You gotta have, you know, Christmas. So you're looking probably about a week per agent. Even if you had ten thousand agents, only fifty weeks, right? It's only half a million. If there's twenty million, twenty million illegal immigrants, that's forty years. It would take forty years under ideal circumstances to deport all of the, you know, illegal immigrants. 
it's never going to happen. Um, the government knows this, and that is uh, why they kind of throw, threw up their hands and said, no, nah, we can't do anything about it. Like, <sighs> never forget the authorization, Trump's authorization for this wall was passed bipartisanly under George W. Bush. Um, there's a reason it wasn't funded, because yes, you have the authority to, to build a wall, but everyone has just kind of seen it as a waste of money. And to be fair, it still is a waste of money. Um, it's just that, you know, maybe it's worth keeping your promises so people have faith in your administration, so people will vote for you again. Um, maybe it's worth $20 billion to gain that faith uh, of the American people. Anyways, um, thanks if you watch this video. Um, a lot of people don't understand, like, look, a lot of conservatives have a lot of insights. Like, Sargon has a lot of insights into humanity that the left does not have. But if I can leave you with anything, it's that the left has a lot of insights into humanity that the conservatives don't have. The main one is how fragile institutions are, that you can very easily overwhelm institutions. Um, the government doesn't have the resources, the capacity to stop people from smoking weed, even after generations, even after an unbelievable amount of money was spent uh, trying to stop people from smoking weed. Same thing is true of illegal immigration. You just overwhelm the system. Even if every single illegal immigrant turned themselves in, which they did, uh, DACA, DACA recipients did, uh, the government still doesn't have the ability or the capacity to deport them. And that's why Trump said, ah, whatever, like, it's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave them here uh, because it's impossible. Like, you, you can't do it. Um, the numbers just don't ever add up. And again, people get mad at, uh, you know, uh, Ocasio-Cortez for, um, for not knowing how to pay for any of her plans, right? But turn this on the conservatives. How do you pay for it? How do you pay for it? Uh, the closest I've ever seen to an answer was Ann Coulter say, oh, they'll self-deport. You do e-verify and they'll self-deport. It's not an answer. They will not self-deport. Uh, if you force everyone to have e-verify, people just scam e-verify. It's not that hard to make an ID. Okay, and e-verify, I know, I know how e-verify works, but people will work under the table. Just have an underground economy. Um, it's, it's not that hard and it's extremely hard to deport people. And that's assuming no violence, right? I mean, like, if you piss off 20 million people, there is a chance you get violence, which we have had in the past. Not necessarily from illegal immigrants, but uh, from, from the left. And don't don't imagine that a ton of Americans aren't going to stand up if they think deporting illegal immigrants is wrong, right? I mean, you're going to have tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of people marching in the streets, possibly, uh, you know, committing huge acts of, you know, random acts of violence. And you can say, oh, well, we'll quash this, we'll quash, quash that. The government doesn't have the money to do that. It doesn't have the money or the political will to do any of that. Um, you know, we've got to pay for Social Security, which uh, ironically... Illegal immigrants help us with our deficit because they pay into the system, but they don't take out a lot of resources. Um, anyways, uh, tell me what you think. If you actually watch this or some of it, uh, I know it was a little bit long, but hope you have a great day. Bye.